everyone. Welcome to Temple Sinai's K-2 through Youth Program. Normally we do this in person. This year it's going to be a little bit different. Um, the way it'll work is we're going to talk about the holiday, we're going to do a craft, cooking, there'll be a puppet show, story time, music, um, and all related to the holiday of Rosh Hashanah. And so why Rosh Hashanah? What's the big deal? Well, for Jews, this is our new year. It's, our, it's the start of a whole new year for us. We look back and we um, apologize for things we might have done to offend people. We take care of our family. We have festive meals. Um, and at this time of the year, a few things that you'll see would be round challahs because now we are starting a whole new cycle of a year. So that's why it's a circle, like a, so it's round and that's why we eat round challah. We also serve apples and honey so that you have a sweet new year. Um, and a lot of people make honey cake. This is also a time that you would see that. So the Jewish New Year is associated with lots of really good food, but a lot of sweetness for a good year for everyone, a healthy year for everyone. Um, we also have um, a big part of the Rosh Hashanah service is blowing the shofar. And normally in person, this is our big K through two parade into the sanctuary and we get to hear all the shofar being blown. Um, Mr. Nelson will be blowing it during this time. I put one in your bag so you'll be able to participate with that as well. Um, I don't know how many of you have already blown a real shofar. Here at Temple Sinai we do teach shofar blowing classes because um, for the end of Yom Kippur when we're in person we ask the kids who have learned to blow the shofar to come on the bima and do the final blowing of the shofar and it's a loud loud long blast. Um, so the shofar is a big part of Rosh Hashanah. And now I'm turning it over to Mr. Nelson for a few songs. Thanks, Mrs. Nelson. Let's start with a welcoming song, Hine Matov. Hine Matov Umanayim Shevetachim Gam Yachad Hine Matov Umanayim Shevetachim kam yachad Hine matso Shevetachim kam yachad Hine matso Shevetachim kam yachad Sing it with me Manaim Shevetachim Kam Yachad Hine Matobu Manaim Shevetachim Kam Yachad Hine Matobu Manaim Shevetachim we're gonna sing a song about apples and honey Tapuchim Urbash Le Rosh Hashanah, a sweet new year, a sweet new year. And it goes like this Dip apples in the honey for Rosh Hashanah. Tapuchim Urbash Le Rosh Hashanah, a sweet new year. A sweet new year Dip apples in the honey For a shashana 
We're going to try it together. Dip apples in the honey for Rosh Hashanah. Everybody, dip apples in the honey for Rosh Hashanah. Now the Hebrew, tapuchimun vash le Rosh Hashanah. A sweet new year, a sweet new year. Everyone, dip apples in the honey for Rosh Hashanah. So in preparation for the holiday in our program, I'm going to read a book called Rosh Hashanah is Coming. And it's going to cover a lot of the things that we're going to be doing this morning. So, golden leaves fall, hear the geese call, Rosh Hashanah is coming. Crack the eggs, hear the sound, make this braided challah round. Rosh Hashanah is coming. Blow out, not too fast, Takiya will blast, Rosh Hashanah is coming. Crisp apples so sweet, dip in honey and eat, Rosh Hashanah is coming. Scoop seeds from the skin, juice drips down my chin, Rosh Hashanah is coming. Put on our new clothes, striped tie, dress with bows, Rosh Hashanah is coming. The candles burn bright as this day turns to night, Rosh Hashanah is coming. Down goes the sun, join hands everyone, Rosh Hashanah is coming. Together we cheer, Shana Tova, Happy New Year. Hi again. So you guys all should have gotten a bag that looks like this in your bright orange bags that went home during Sunday school. And in the bag, you will have found your very own shofar. Save that for later. You will have found your ingredients for the brownies that we're making. So the big bag is flour, the smaller bag is sugar, and then I think you know that this is applesauce. There should be two of them. We're going to do that after. Or a little later. And the craft, you should have received two plastic plates, just like these, a bag of tissue paper, already cut in squares, a bottle of glue, and a paintbrush. And that's those are the things we're going to need for our craft. These four items, the glue, the tissue paper, the paintbrush, and our two plastic plates. And then I know in the bag there are, there is a whale and a man. It's supposed to be Jonah and the whale. We're not going to do that. We're saving that for Yom Kippur because our whole theme will be about Jonah and the whale. But because we don't see you in between, we're sent everything home at one time. Right. Um, so first things first, you have two plates. One you're going to leave facing up. The other one you're going to flip over. You're going to take your glue. You can either just open it and you have to work relatively fast because the glue dries up. And you're going to take your tissue paper. You don't have to be fancy and you just start sticking it on. If you want to spread the glue out, once you do it, to make it a little easier, you can take it and spread the glue out on the bottom of the plate and then quickly fill up your spot with your tissue paper. So it should look like, it should look like this, where you have glue spread out and tissue paper on top. You're gonna do that on the whole plate I'm not going to do this now because it takes a little while. So you're going to do that on the whole plate. And then once you've filled the whole round, not the rigidy area, but the round part, you're going to put glue on the top of this, the other plate and stick them together. And, that, and what you'll see is a pretty design of tissue paper sealed between the two plates. 
And that would be your honey plate that you will put. Thanks, Mrs. Nelson. I hope everyone's having a wonderful time learning and singing. We're gonna do a couple more songs here. The first one is really, really easy. And it goes la, 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 la. Can you try that with me at home? La, 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 la. And it's called Rosh Hashanah's Here. La 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 Rosh Hashanah's here Rosh Hashanah's here Let's sing it now, it goes like this Rosh Hashanah's here It comes once a year We like to see our friends We hope it never ends I hope I'm being clear Rosh Hashanah's here Everybody at home Adults and kids La 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 Rosh Hashanah's here Rosh Hashanah's here All right, let's sing just our voices La 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 I hope I'm being clear Rosh Hashanah is here. Woo, that was great. Hope everyone was singing at home. Let's do one more. Mrs. Nelson told us a little bit about dipping apples in the honey for Rosh Hashanah. And we sang Tapu Chim Udvash. Well, here's a little song about a sweet new year and it's called Sweet as Honey. Sweet as honey, sweet as honey, sweet as honey on our tongues. Sweet as honey, sweet as honey, sweet as honey on our tongues. Baruch Atah Adonai. Sweet as honey, sweet as honey, sweet as honey on our tongues. Sweet as honey, sweet as honey, sweet as honey on our tongues. You try it with me. Sweet as honey, sweet as honey. Sweet as honey on our tongues. Sweet as honey, sweet as honey, sweet as honey on our tongues. Awesome. Back to you, Mrs. Nelson. Did you know that in the Bible, Rosh Hashanah is not called Rosh Hashanah? It's called Yom Truah, the day of blasting the shofar, the ram's horn. The shofar is sounded many times during Rosh Hashanah, and a long and loud shofar blast marks the end of Yom Kippur. First, let's learn about what each of the four shofar sounds mean, and we'll show you what they sound like. Tekiah, Tekiah is a single blow. It's a long, loud blast. If you've ever seen a knight or court messenger play a horn or blow a long sound to call attention to a king in a movie, Tekiah is kind of like that. When Takiya sounds, it brings everyone to attention. Okay, you ready? ready, Mr. Nelson? Yep. Takiya. Shh. 
um, shivarim, the next type of sound made with the shofar is called shivarim. The three broken blows of shivarim sound like crying. Some scholars believe that shivarim is our tears of sadness or joy at another year passing. Shivarim. You might wonder why Mr. Nelson is blowing this kind of shofar and not this kind of shofar. These are the shofarot that are in your bag, so you will be able to sound just like Mr. Nelson when you practice the sounds. Mrs. Nelson, most shofars don't say Happy New Year on them, mm -hmm. so this is a special one. Trua, the third type of sound made by the shofar blower, is called trua and involves nine or more rapid fire or staccato blows. Think of this sound as an alarm clock that you can't hit snooze on. Trua is the wake up call to the new year. Oh, trua. <laughs> and then Takia Gadola. The three sounds above are played all throughout the Rosh Hashanah service. And during the final combination, the shofar player concludes with Takia Gadola, the great blast. One long, one blast long Takia to wrap up. Before we do that, if any of you kids have your special shofar at home and you want to do this with me, I bet you're going to beat me. I'm going to try to do this as long as I can, and we're going to see who at home can hold it for longer than me. Okay, Mrs. Nelson, right, are you ready? You ready? Takia de. Takia Gadola. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice job, Mr. Nelson. So now you can practice at home all of these sounds. It's Takia Shvarim Trua and Takia Gadola. And now we're going to sing a song. Let's sing about the shofar. Please join me at home. I like to hear the shofar blast, sometimes slow and sometimes fast. I like to hear the shofar blast, happy, happy, happy. Tikiya Gidola Now you Tikiya Gidola Great! I like to hear the shofar blast Sometimes slow and sometimes fast I like to hear the shofar blast. Happy, happy, happy new year. Happy, happy, happy new year. Happy, happy, happy new
So now we are going to make our three ingredient applesauce brownies. It's very easy. You're going to, um, once you're finished, it will look like this. They, um, they come cut into squares. It's a little soft. It's soft, softer than a regular brownie, but it does taste really good. I did try one. So what you'll do is you're going to take your flour and you're going to dump it into your bowl. You're going to take, oops, you're going to take your sugar and dump that also into the bowl. And then you're going to mix the two together till they're mixed thoroughly, till the sugar and the flour is all mixed together. Then you're going to take your applesauce and add that. You're going to add one full one. And then open the second one and add half of this one. So kind of guesstimate what half looks like, but you're only going to do half of it. And then you're going to mix, mix, mix. And it seems like it's not mixing well or it looks more doughy like it's supposed to be a really thick batter so you just keep mixing it it should be um, it should be thick but moist at the end once you're finished putting all the flour together if you find that it's still too um, it's not sticking together you can add a little more of the applesauce but I think the applesauce makes it a little too mushy. So you want to have a really good firm dough. It ends up looking like one big bowl, like this, if you can see. I don't know if you can see. It looks like one big bowl. Bowl. <laughs> and then if you, we don't because we're a peanut-free school, but if you choose because you're at home, to add any kind of nut butter, so peanut butter, almond butter, sunflower, whatever, you can add that into the dough at this time. And then once you're done, you're gonna put it into a pan and flatten it out, and then you will add your cinnamon and sugar mixture on the top and put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour, but the longer the better to um, make sure that it gets firm. And then take it out, it looks like this. You can see I'm, I'm a, um, someone who really likes cinnamon, so I covered mine in lots of cinnamon. You can choose how you want to add. If you're dangerous and daring, you can add chocolate chips or raisins. Whatever you want, it's yours for, um, for the tasting. Enjoy your brownies. In preparation for our Tosh Leek puppet show, I am going to read a Rosh Hashanah walk. It's Rosh Hashanah, I'm taking a Tosh Leek trip. I take this walk each new year. Come along and bring your friends. Okay, group, is everybody ready? Are your shoelaces tied? Here we go. Come march with me, just point your toes. I'll take you where the water flows. It's fun to sing a Tashlich tune on Rosh Hashanah afternoon. On Tashlich trips we sing. I see some puddles in the street. Let's walk right through and splash our feet. Is this, this the treasured spot we seek or has the hydrant sprung a leak? On Tashlich trips we walk. I think I hear a gurgling sound. It's coming from the school playground. Can this be what we're searching for, or do we have to look some more? On Tosh Leek trips, we search. That water fountain isn't right. We're looking for another site. The place for Tosh Leek has to be beside a stream or at the sea. On Tosh Leek trips, we look. Ask yourself as you walk along about last year and what went wrong. Those times you made your parents mad by doing things you knew were bad. On Tosh Leek trips, we ask. You hit your brother on his head and hid his toys beneath the bed. Remember when you wouldn't share the cotton candy at the fair? On Tosh Leek trips, we remember. You told a fib, you slammed the door, you spilled your milkshake on the floor, and this is only half the list, just to think of all the things you missed. On Tosh Leek trips, we think. Stop, we're here. We found the flowing waters. Be careful, don't get too close to the edge. On our Tosh Leaf trip, we sang and walked and searched and looked and asked and thought and remembered. 
Now it's time to reach deep into our pockets, pretend we're reaching into last year, pretend each crumb in our pocket is something we are sorry about. There are crumbs for when we were angry. There are crumbs for when we told a lie. There are crumbs for when we didn't help. Don't forget a single one. Empty all these crumbs out of your pockets and fling them far into the water. Tashlich means to throw away. We throw all our mistakes from last year into the flowing water. They float away and are lost in the huge ocean. As we watch them disappear, we say, I'm sorry about all those things. I'll try not to do them again. On Toshlich trips, we say, I'm sorry. With empty pockets, turn and greet a brand new year that's fresh and sweet. It's fun to sing a Toshlich tune on Rosh Hashanah afternoon. What are you doing at the lake? Hi, Kermit. Just watching the fishies swim. What brings you to the lake today? And why do you have breadcrumbs? Well, Elmo, my favorite part of the high holidays, besides the apples dipped in honey, challah dipped in honey, and my fingers dipped in honey, <laughs> is Tosh Leaf. Tosh Leaf? What is that? I never heard of that. Well, Tashlik is when we think about the things we did that might have been wrong in the past year, Elmo, and then we throw them away with a promise to try harder in the next year. We go to a body of water like this, where the fishies are, on the afternoon of Rosh Hashanah and throw breadcrumbs into it, which washes away all of our not-so-great things we did the last year. The Jewish New Year is a time for us to look inside ourselves. Inside ourselves? Yes, Elmo, and take an honest look at the past year. We notice what things we need to improve on and decide how we're going to work on them. The breadcrumbs symbolize the things that might not be so good that we can improve upon in the coming year. We throw them away, taking a few crumbs to Tashlik from whatever old bread is in your house. Elmo has some suggestions for types of breadcrumbs to use. <laughs> okay, uh, what are some of your success suggestions, Elmo? Well, for helping making good decisions, we can use waffles. <laughs> for trying not to rush as much as we can, we use matzah. <laughs> when we feel we weren't brave enough, we use milk toast. <laughs> For times when we were grumpy, we can use sourdough. <laughs> For remembering not to litter, we can use dumplings. <laughs> and for singing a little out of tune in religious school music with Mr. John Nelson, we can use flatbread. <laughs> Hilarious, Elmo, but do you want to hear an important and serious prayer about trying to do better in the coming year? Yeah, I sure would. Okay, God, I try to be good, but sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I get a little upset and may say something that isn't nice or a little bit mean. But I want to be good and kind and helpful and thoughtful. And I do try, and I know I can try harder. Nobody's perfect, but I do want to be better. So please, God, for next year, help me do a little more on the good side and a little less on the not so good. That was wonderful, Kermit. I love that. Thank you, I had one year in rabbinical school. <laughs> Trying harder to be better kids is something we can all work on, right? How about you kids at home? What can you work on? I really like Tosh Leek. It makes me feel good and I know I can always try harder during the new year. But Kermit, what about the fishies? If we throw bad things in the water, won't the fishies get sick? No, well, no, the breadcrumbs are just a symbol of the things we want to throw away. It doesn't harm the fish. In fact, we can't give the fishies too much or their bellies get too full, see? So we just throw a little, we cast away the things we want to do better on. Thanks, Kermit! Elmo counted five things that Elmo can be better on this year. So I'm going to throw five breadcrumbs. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Not too much so the fishies don't get too full. So 
Sounds good, Elmo. Hey, why don't we turn it over to Mr. John Nelson for a song we can sing at the end of Tosh Leap? Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was a great puppet show. I learned a lot about Tosh Leap, and I think we learned a lot at home as well. I also really like the book that Mrs. Nelson read. It was really interesting, and I hope you got a lot out of it at home. We're going to sing Avinu Malkenu now, which is a very important prayer during the High Holidays. It asks God to be good to us, to be gracious to us, and to help us. And it goes like this. Avinu Malkenu Avinu Malkenu Avinu Malkenu Kohenu Vanenu Kien Banu Ma Asim Aseimanu Sedachav Achesed Aseimanu Sedachav Achesed Just hum the melody, or you can use la la la. La 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 Manu and together Avinu Malchenu, Kohenu Vanenu, Kien Manu Asim. So that concludes our Rosh Hashanah program for today. Looking forward to Yom Kippur, which happens 10 days from now. We will be back together, and our theme will be Jonah and the Whale. But the focus for you guys, your homework for the next 10 days, is to try and, and say sorry for all the things that you might have done over the last year. Apologize to your parents. Apologize to your brother for hitting him or your sister for taking their toys. Whatever it is, spend the next 10 days trying to ask forgiveness and start to look to do things better for the next year. Shana Tova. <laughs> and now we'd like everyone to sing with us La Shana Tova Tika Tevu. Here we go. La Shana Tova Tika Lishana to Vatika Tebu Tika Tebu Tika Tebu Let's sing La 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 together, everybody. La 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 Shana Tova. Shana Tova. When I got up today, I really had to say.